Hi, this is Katie Bomberger here talking about uh, my accessibility evaluations. So the first tool that I chose is a PowerPoint that I use for animal adaptations. I have a couple and I rotate through them, uh, but I just want to go through the PowerPoint and discuss the accessible um, points in this presentation and then the ones that uh, need to be fixed in order to make it more accessible for our different types of learners. So the first thing that I want to go over um, is in the accessibility um, handbook it talks about the outline view and that it's better for students with visual impairments. So when I go up to this and I look in the um, slideshow, sorry, um, in the views, and I want to go to outline view, it says here that I should be able to see all of the information from each slide and all of the words from each slide should be down here and clearly they're not so um, that's just an extra way that someone with a visual impairment would see the information so you can see here over in the orange I'm on slide 2 and you don't see that text from slide 2 so there you see the short-eared owl so um, this doesn't match match up with that um, qualification when I go and you want to talk about the slide layout, this is built using the um, the slide formatting from PowerPoint. So if you go down here and look at new slide, a lot of these slides are done with um, title and content, and then some are done with picture and caption. Uh, for example, right here is like a picture with caption. So um, it hits that mark. Uh, reading order, it does match up with that. Um, when you click through the slides, it it just goes straight through it using the keyboard. Um, so here a screen reader would be able to read the content. It doesn't skip or jump around, which would be good again with for someone who has visual impairments. And if I go through and I'm talking about images, clip art, and shapes, I'm going to stay on this slide right here, actually. Um, when you're talking about just the coloring of certain things, if this is a person who, you know, had visual impairments, for them to be able to identify the number of tree frogs here would be pretty difficult. So for them, this would not be a useful slide, um, visual impairments. You know, if you're colorblind, that would be very difficult to see because these frogs are using um, camouflage there to blend in. Um, and the other thing that I want to talk about, so like for this picture, it says it's a short-eared owl, but to add the text to it, um, I would have to add that because I don't have anything giving the descriptive text. So um, for this one I did go up and I went in and I I added the text um, but for the other images in this slideshow I, I don't have that added. So that's something that would need to be added for especially if the images like this one is um, describing camouflage and mimicry, it's really important for them to see that. So without that being there, they're missing out on a lot. Uh, the same thing if they can't see the colors of the monarch or the chameleon, you know, that's something that's pretty difficult too. So they should have um, text to the images and shapes. If I'm looking down at the next thing about lists, and I want to go to slide 8, for example, like this, two separate categories. There could be bullets here 
to help us. And I also think that bullets could be used here for body structures, not just for this, but if I would come in here, um, body structures, what do they do? They help animals. If I put bullets like this, find food, take this away, consume food, I think it would make it a little bit easier um, for them to be able to just go down through the list and see what I'm trying to describe to them. I don't have any links in this slideshow, that's, so that's not one of the areas I could check out. Um, and I don't have any tables, but what I did pay more attention to um, was the coloring. So in here it says use sufficient color contrast and don't use color alone to convey meaning. Um, so, you know, right down here, there's a multicolored word, okay? I don't think that's um, the way I should have that. Um, there was another one in here that I wanted to go over. Uh, let me find it. Um. Even this, this color contrast in here, that's not very good. That would be hard for someone with a visual impairment to see because it's yellow on yellow. Um, but there's not a whole lot else in here that I put coloring in just to make meaning. I tried to use some of the colorings for them to stick out where maybe I should have just bulleted them. Um, I could have bulleted this as well. There's no math and science in here. I mean, uh, no math um, written in PowerPoint, but one thing that, um, you know, would be helpful was, would be to embed a video in this for for my students to see and then within that video provide some captioning for them. Um, this PowerPoint slide, oops, I think it does help go over some of my kids. Um, it activates their prior knowledge because it starts out with just asking them what they see, counting frogs, so it gets them engaged in the lesson. Um, but you know what I don't see in here is I don't really have the goals for the lesson listed in here. I'm not talking about our, our objectives, our essential questions. Um, but down here at the end, we are fostering some collaboration where the students can work in groups um, to talk about physical adaptations um, so they can work together to respond to those types of things. I also I don't think there's a lot in here that helps with self-regulation. Um, under the universal design they talk about representation and I don't have any auditory information nor do I have any video information so that's not really helping there. Um, for language and symbols I do have clear vocabulary and I don't think the text gets in the way of learning however I'm not going across any languages here. Um, it's only in English there's nothing here that would help uh, an ESL student. And again, I said there's not any use of different forms of media, which is something I could work on. I do think that within this PowerPoint, I'm highlighting important information, though I might want to reconsider how I'm doing that. Um, probably add more bulleting and, and limit the use of the coloring to highlight some of the words. For physical action, there's not much difference here in methods for response. It's basically putting the students in groups. Um, and I don't have any manipulatives or 3D tools within this. So 
Um, that's something that I could work on in the area of expression and communication. So there are some good things about this PowerPoint and then there are some things that could definitely use improvement. Um, the one thing that I'm really happy that I found was how I can go to the outline view and then actually see what's listed here because I was really really surprised that none of my information showed up there and I also really appreciated learning how to do this um, text on the side to give a description of what the picture is showing because a lot of these pictures provide important meaning for what's going on within this slide, what I'm trying to convey to the students. So that is my accessibility evaluation for my PowerPoint for animal adaptations.